Hello, so this is your introductory session at the sleep clinic. I'm very glad you can make it, of course. Um, would you mind if I just have a quick read through of your notes that your GP sent through and your previous uh, consultant, just so I can just get a, a feel for your, your issues and your current situation? Lovely. Okay, just bear with me a moment. Let me just have a just a look through. Don't excuse us, we actually have a resident cat here. Do you, are you okay with cats? You are, lovely. Okay. Apologies. She, um, I'll explain a bit more about her a bit later. She's, um, she's actually part of the, the uh, relaxation programme we do here. Yeah, she does make herself at home on the beds, that's right. Okay. Okay, so you've you've had several several therapies. Is that right? Okay, okay, and this this is all related to your sleep issues. Right. And none of them have worked. So this has been going on for five years, I see. Right. And can you think of anything that may have triggered that? Was, was anything significant that happened five years ago when your, when your issue started? Okay, you made redundant, right. Yeah, absolutely. That's, um, there's no telling just what a, an emotional effect and psychological effect the redundancy can have on people, absolutely. Sure, sure, it's a very, very difficult time, especially in this climate, and of course, um, <clears throat> five years ago, um, especially with the recession, the, the global recession, of course, we've been experiencing, a lot of people have been looking for jobs, and whereas before, of course, you'd, um, a hundred applicants would be applying for one role, it could be as much as 200, so absolutely it does, the redundancy really does affect people hugely. I do think it's vastly underestimated the psychological effects it can have on people, especially in terms of, um, especially in terms of sleep, of course. Right, okay. Okay, um, 
so I've just had a brief glance at your history and um, some of the notes from the professionals who've been working with you for the past five years. Um, so it does seem like, of course, you've had a huge amount of therapy, which is great. Um, but of course, absolutely, it doesn't always work. Excuse me. It doesn't always work for everyone, does it? So um, let's see if we can't get you get you sorted. Can we just close this door a minute? Just bear with me. Oh, to excuse me, that was very loud. Um, so, what's the best thing? What I think the best thing to do is let me just take a, a brief history um, and then I will explain to you about how we work, what our philosophy is and the sort of things that you can expect from the sleep clinic. Okay, so let's just start, I've obviously had a, had a look at your notes here, so let's just start from the situation and your issues as you see it. Is that acceptable to you to go down that way for way of working at the moment? Okay, okay, lovely. So, um, so you say it's uh, five years of the experience in this, okay. Okay, lovely. Um, yeah, that's fine. Ah, uh, no, that's fine. Okay, um, and so redundancy was the, you believe was the trigger, and before that, had you had any kind of sleep problems before? No, okay. Okay, and in your own words, explain to me exactly the issues you are experiencing with sleep at this present time. Okay, so you can actually get to sleep, okay? Okay, and... Okay, and you're finding you're waking up quite a lot. Okay, and roughly how many times a night would you say that you are waking up? Five, up to five times. Okay. All right, okay. And during those wake-ups, how long does it take you to get back to sleep? Okay. So that can vary, okay, so so roughly 30 minutes to an hour sometimes to 4 to 5 hours some others. Right, okay, so, okay, so you're saying that the earlier the wake-up, the quicker it'll be for you to get back to sleep. Okay, so, um... Right, understand. Okay, so after five o'clock, then that will be you will be up for the duration of even. And how does that affect your um, your daily life once you're up and about? I assume you're going to be pretty tired. Okay. And and you nap during the day? No. Okay. Oh, of course. Um, I wasn't sure if you're full time or part time. All right. And um, what's your bedtime routine like? Ad hoc. Okay, to, right, dinner on the television? Oh, okay, and what time do you eat dinner? Okay, oh gosh, that's quite late, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, uh, there's, a, there, there's a lot of um, self-help basics that you can do yourself, which we will um, talk through with you at the end of the sleep programme, just to... Um, give you some tips and pointers on how to ensure you do get a, bit, a good night's sleep and that includes making sure that you eat um, a good meal at least two hours before you intend to go to sleep and ensure that it's early in the evening so then you've got that time to wind down afterwards and digest your, digest your food um, and also things like um, watching television just before you go to bed is certainly not recommended yeah, of course. Okay. Okay, and what do you understand about our program? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was a recommendation word of mouth. Well, that's interesting. Okay, 
lovely. So that's just a brief history there. Oh, don't excuse me. Mm. I'm very sorry, cats will be cats, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's that's not pleasant to uh, the uh, well it's just as well you like cats and we have some people here who understand we don't like cats at all and uh, who can blame them when they do things like this and charmless charmless behaviour sometimes, absolutely. But it's it's good that you do like cats. Okay, so let's just ignore what's going on there for the time being. <laughs> um, she's our resident uh, kitty, so uh, just so we'll just bear with her. Um, so um, let me explain about how our sleep clinic works. It's um, a very unusual philosophy in that although we do um, do some relaxation uh, procedures. On, on yourself in terms of um, just before you go to bed, in terms of a progressive relaxation, perhaps a bit of meditation. Um, one of my colleagues is um, can perform Reiki or a massage, head massage, that kind of thing. Um, the philosophy that we operate is really get to know the patient inside out and back to front in terms of their likes and their dislikes. So what that means is that we will talk to you about the things that interest and excite you and really inspire you, as well as, crucially, the things that really don't, the absolute opposite, the things that really bore you. And that is the list that we work from during our programme, because in fact what we do is um, my colleagues will go through the list of things that really bores a person um, and as part of their bedtime routine, they will um, talk to that person about the subjects that really bore them. The idea that they are then bored effectively to sleep. Yeah, absolutely, it's a very quirky, a quirky approach, but we have a 99% success rate. Yeah, definitely. I know, who'd have thought? Oh, what was the 1%? <laughs> Actually, uh, it's funny you should say that. Um, it was... It was several years ago now, the, um, a colleague of mine had actually um, mixed up the lists with one of their patients between um, their likes and their dislikes and um, instead of reading this particular patient and going through the various topics that she was under the impression that they, um, they were bored with, they were actually really inspired with it, it was the wrong list. So this person, instead of becoming sleepier and then was relaxed enough, or bored enough, I should say, to sleep, um, it totally wired them and they became very animated and were very enthused by these subjects. Um, so that programme did not work very well at all. And of course, um, once the mistake was realised, this uh, they didn't uh, they didn't want to try again and see if it would work better for them. So. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's happened just once in all the uh, ten years we've been running. So, um, but I'm sure it won't happen. It happen with you. Um, okay. So, let's let's just start with the things that really interest you. Let's start, let's make it really easy and just start off with your favourite um, television programmes. Ah, oh, she likes soaps. Okay, you're a Corrie fan rather than EastEnders. Yep. No, I, I have to admit, I haven't. I don't tend to watch soaps. Yeah, I've definitely had a, a bit of a deprived adulthood in that respect. <laughs> okay, you like watching? Yep. Animal documentaries. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Yep. Okay, and the type of TV that you're not so keen on. Oh, I'm with you there. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. X Factor. Yep, I could definitely do without that on the television screens. Okay, um, what about books? What kind of books do you like reading? 
sci-fi. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, and uh, again, the the genres that you you are bored by. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. That's the um, boiler in the next room. We this particular. Uh, patient bedroom is um it's parallel to the boiler so it is rather noisy at times apologies for that okay so what about your outdoor hobbies and pursuits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fine, stream of consciousness, if that's why you're talking to me, you can think about the things that you like, don't like, then I will drop down. There's no need for a particular order. As many as, as you can, pick as many as you can, then um, my, when we change shifts later on, the night shift, we'll have a look through your dislikes and your likes and select a few to talk to you about as you're going to sleep. So the more they have, the more scope they have to discuss these subjects with you. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. subject there so we can we can um, in my research can find your is it any particular hit period in history or type of architecture that bores you or that you really don't like or the material side okay and oil and gas industry that is interesting I mean haha <laughs> it's obviously not interesting for you and you like sport okay <laughs> There's a lot of scope there to discuss um, all kinds of th Oh, dinosaurs, you're not interested. Well, I suppose you're not a child, right? So, yep, that's it. Whenever whenever you do go to those museums, it's always um, preceded with that flooded, pardon the pun, um, the dinosaur exhibits by the Napri Brigade. So, um, don't really get a good look at the dinosaurs with all the, with all the little tots and tiddlers waddling about. Okay, that's fab. We've got enough details there. Okay, so you wanted to know about the purpose of the the animals in a sleep clinic. Um, so of course, in addition to the other um, services we offer during your stay here, in terms of massage. Um, Reiki, meditation, yoga, progressive relaxation. Um, um, we do operate a pet-friendly policy. Um, not not your own pets for obvious reasons in terms of their own different temperaments, um, but in terms.
also we have animals on site because there is a huge body of research to indicate um, that spending time with calm animals, stroking them um, and petting them really does lower the blood pressure to healthy levels and reduces uh, the cortisol stress levels in the system um, and especially cats when the cat is purring um, it really can induce a state of deep relaxation in the person concerned definitely so we have we have cats um, and we have guinea pigs rabbits um, that's it yep and hamsters we don't we don't um, have dogs on site purely because they can be tend to be a lot more boisterous um, and dogs tend to be for the type of environment where patients need to be encouraged to encouraged to be getting more active so for example in a in a, in a clinic to um, to help people recover from anxiety and depression then dogs would be ideal for that in um, in getting people up and about um, but the very nature of the cat is a very sleepy calm animal so the cat is ideal in these in these settings to encourage others to feel sleepy also um, and the same with with rabbits of course and there's some breed of hamster and guinea pigs that also do do very similar um, not so much hamsters of course uh, especially at night time we don't for that reason they're not um, not in any of the bedrooms at night um, but it's those animals tend to really be for the people who just don't like cats because we are aware that the cats aren't for everyone um, and if you're someone who doesn't like cats then that's not going to be the most relaxing uh, experience you will have in a sleep clinic such as this okay but that's great you you're you're happy with cats uh -huh. okay so it is like a home from home from you and indeed for this cat too okay so uh, just a little bit of information about the rooms you're obviously given your own room um, it's a single private room uh, we've kept it very basic for the purposes of um, we believe that to promote good healthy sleep the less distractions around the better um, so they're calming walls um, without any posters or pictures on the walls that could be distracting because even some pictures that are meant to promote feelings of calm like flowers or water scenes riverside scene can actually be a little bit too stimulating um, for someone especially someone who really doesn't like art um so so there we are that's that will you this is where you will you will sleep um and of course you'll start the evening we will give you a meal around 6 37 and um, all the food you'll be given will be sleep inducing f foods um and if you like coffee or tea then your last cup of uh, coffee or tea caffeinated anyway will be at two in the afternoon again we believe that anything after that won't be um won't be good for a good night's sleep. So we're hoping of course that a combination of all the things that we're teaching you on this programme and all the systems and routines we have in place are things that you yourself will be able to take home and replicate in your own home. Absolutely. Um, and of course after dinner then you're free to socialise and mingle with the other people who are who are going undergoing the sleep programme. Um, we have we have some very calming therapeutic gardens outside which a colleague will show you afterwards um, it has a water feature of course and that's very calming to just sit on the bench nearby and listen to that the water fountain and um, we have koi carp in, that, in the in the pond um, and lily pads so it's a really lovely place um, to sit and be still and wind down after dinner um, you're you're here at the good time of year as well it being it being summer but of course um, in the winter we do actually have areas of the garden which have um, heated patios so so really any time of year is it's um, it's good really um you're very welcome to help yourself to anything in the kitchens at the communal kitchen so any hot chocolate um herbal calming tea um and of course if you can't sleep if you find that the program isn't working for you then please don't feel that you have to stay in bed 
the worst thing you can do if you can't sleep is to stay in bed and lie awake because that just gets you, your body more awake and more um, agitated. So it's always recommended that if after 20 minutes you're still wide awake, then get up, have a little walk, have a calm drink, um, and then try again in a half an hour's time. Okay. That's it. So you'll have, um, after, when, it, when it's bedtime, um, we will try to do the first attempt at sleep. But of course, as you said, you, you have no problem getting sleep, it's the wake-ups. Um, so how that would work with our program is that you would have a, you have a bell by the side of your bed, a little buzzer. Um, and so the first wake up, you'll press that, um, and then one of uh, my colleagues will um, come and sit with you and talk to you about one of the subjects that you previously selected as one of the ones that bore you, and I hope that will get you back to sleep. Um, this, of course, could be replicated at home by the idea is that um, you'll be given a handout of the script that they, he or she have used. Um, the idea that you'll get your record yourself um, if you don't want to. Some people uh, prefer to record themselves reading the script for use later on in their own home. But what we can actually do is give you a recording of one of our research, of our colleagues uh, reading the script. With the idea being that all you need to do then is switch that on and listen to that during one of your wake-ups. Um, and the mere mention of particular topic will be enough to make you very, very drowsy indeed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely intriguing stuff. Uh -huh, yep, and e even if it means if you're waking up four or five times a night, then don't be afraid to press one of the blast buzzers. Uh, the night staff are well used to doing that, and indeed that's their job. So they'll be reading from a script that they have prepared during the they're prepared earlier, so after a, our consultation, it's I will brief my colleagues who will be with you during the night shift, mm -hmm. and they will go through the list that you have selected, you have uh, spoken to me of, um, and put together a script with um, information and um, different different bits and pieces about the topics that you have you have told us that you're not interested in. <laughs> um, and of course they'll go into a lot of detail um, using Wikipedia pages of course and and um, other things they found online. Um, so they start to build up a very big picture um, of the area of non-interest, shall we say. So that's something that can be easily replicated in our home and of course you're, you're very welcome to use the CDs that we have prepared for you. Okay, okay, so do you have any questions at all? Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. So usually we'd say um, the first night with us is really a getting to know a session and just kind of uh, testing the waters, trying us out, seeing, seeing the routine, um, getting a feel for how we work here, so that we don't usually expect to see progress in the first the first night. Um, but usually on the second visit, which of course can be arranged at a later date, at any point in the future if you're choosing, the second or third visit, that's when we start to see a real difference in, in, our, in our patients. Um, and indeed they're then able to take home some of the techniques um, and suggestions and advice we have, we have passed over to them. Lovely. Okay, that's morning. I was finished with this uh, with this introductory session actually. Can you uh, confirm your postcode with us, please? Yep, that's fine. First line of your address, 24. Okay, lovely. And uh, your mobile. 
Yeah, that's fine. I can never remember my mobile number either. Yep, I'll wait, that's no problem. Yep, okay. So you want to just uh, cross check it, sorry, didn't you? 877433322278. Okay, yep, that's what we have to. Okay, lovely. Um, and your high number. 162, yep. 297432. Lovely. Okay, and um, next of kin. Okay, your partner. Absolutely, yep, we've got their name correct, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a contact email. Yeah, what we what we do is we send you, uh, we debrief you after the session, so via email or post, depending on your preference, is we send you, um, we send you more or less the things we've talked about, um, with a pack of the techniques, and a reminder of the routines that we've gone through here so you can have it to hand at your convenience. Your Gmail, okay, yep. Okay, and is that all lowercase? Yep, that's good, that's absolutely correct. Lovely, everything, everything is absolutely up to date here. Yeah. That's done. Good. Okay, so you won't need to see me again um, until I recommend a um, month's time. Um, and of course, you're very welcome to come back to us as often as you like, as often as you feel you're benefiting from the program. Um, you are now handing me over to the care of my colleague. Um, so if you go to reception, with this I'll give you these notes um, and I'll tell you to see me, give her your name um, and she will look after you from there. Okay, lovely. Best of luck. Let's get that to you now.